Welcome to the Primat 3.0 tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss creating actions and using them in batch processing. Actions are a really convenient way within Photoshop to record what you're doing, all the actions that you take, all the filters you use, any changes you make, and record all that so that you can use them later on different images. Now, one great way of using them is to use them with batch processing. And what batch processing does is allow you to select a folder full of images, be it tens of images, hundreds of images, thousands of images, whatever, and apply an action to all the images within that folder. Now, as you can imagine, this is a very convenient way of trying to apply Primat to many images. Instead of having to do everything by hand, you can record it once on one image, as we're going to do here, and then apply it via batch to a folder full of hundreds of images. So let's get started and take a look at how all this works. So the way you create an action is to come on over here to your actions palette and select the new document icon. As you can see it says create new action, our little tooltip, and we can click on that and it'll bring up this dialog and in this case, we're just going to name it Primat Action. And once we hit record, everything we do is going to be recorded in this action. So every step we take within Photoshop is going to be put into this action. So we have to be very careful about doing very specific things that we want to be repeated on other images. So let's hit record. Now, one of the things about Primat is that the way most images come into Photoshop from your camera, be it a JPEG file, a RAW file, anytime you're importing something from your camera on into Photoshop, it's generally going to come in with this background layer. Now the problem with the background layer is that you can't have transparency. And so if you actually want to get rid of this, have it delete all this green background, and then replace it with a different background, you have to have transparency enabled. And if you just leave it as a background layer, that's not going to happen. So the first thing we have to do in this Primat action is to double click on this layer. And in this case we can just leave it as layer 0 or you can name it whatever you like. And click OK. And one thing to note is that, before I do that, is that you can see on the background that you have this little lock symbol. Again, that's indicating that you can't move that around, you can't delete pixels out of there. That layer is just kind of locked the way it is. So when we turn this into a regular Photoshop layer by double clicking on it and then clicking OK, you'll see that the little lock goes away. And now that it's a regular layer within Photoshop, we can now apply Primat to it because once Primat's done, it'll leave us with transparency where this green is enabling you to drop in another background, blow it on the layers palette, and behind our uh, foreground subject here. So let's come in to the filter menu and go to Digital Anarchy and apply Primat. And that's going to bring up our Primat 3.0 window. And because I'm recording this at 800 by 600, you can see that some of our UI is cropped off. But that's okay, because the important bits that we're showing in this tutorial aren't really affected by all that. But uh, if you're looking at it on your own screen, it's going to look a little bit different. You're going to have some more icons off over here, and some more icons below here down on the screen. But what we're really worried about for this tutorial, and for the action, is our new Auto Mask feature. Now Auto Mask allows Primat to automatically analyze this image and get rid of the green background. It's very handy for using it on large number of images and so it's particularly suited for the batch command. And in fact that's what it's designed for. So the way it works is you click on Auto Mask and we're going to click on the Always On button and this is really critical if you're creating a batch action because what you're saying with Always On is that Auto Mask will be applied all the time. You don't have to manually go in there and set it. With this turned on, whenever you launch Primat, 
it's going to apply auto mask. And obviously that's what you want to have if you're going to be applying this to hundreds of images. And so we're going to turn this to always on. And you can see that it's pulled a pretty good mask for us. And so that's all we really need to do for this part of the action. We just want to make sure that auto mask is turned on, always on is selected, and then we hit OK, which is our little check mark up here. And this is going to take us back into Photoshop. Let Primat process the image. And so but that part of the action is finished. So now we can do a couple things, depending on how you want to set up your action. We could either save this to a specific location. Now you can either do the save as part of the action, or you can do the save in the batch processing. And when I show you the batch processing dialog, you'll see how that goes. But you can also do other things. So right now we're not going to save it, but I am going to open up a background image So I've opened up this new image, and I'm going to select all. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to our other green screen image, and I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to move that. And now I've successfully copied this background into our primat image. And this is great, because this is being remembered in the action, so that, say, we have a selection of 25 people and they all want this background, you can record an action that automatically runs Primat, keys out the original green screen or blue screen, and then copies in this other background. And so now we're going to save the image. And so this is going to save it on top of the original file. And so usually you're going to want to do this to backup images. You're going to want to have your original files backed up somewhere else either on DVD or somewhere else on your hard drive, and apply all this to the to copied versions of them. So if anything goes wrong, you don't destroy your originals. So it's usually pretty important to apply the actions to copies and not to the single only original that you happen to have. So now that we've saved this, we can close this image. We can close our background. And remember, all this is being recorded in the action. And this is actually an important part of the action because we want to close these images because we don't want to end up with hundreds of images open up in Photoshop. It'll drag the machine down to a crawl. So whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that you're only doing it on one image at a time. And so the save and close part uh, can be pretty critical. And so now the last step that we're going to do here is click on the stop button. And this is going to stop our action. Now it's no longer recording, so now we can go do, you know, all sorts. Let's uh, open our picture back up again. And you can see that in the actions palette, I've got all of the actions, all of the commands that I told Photoshop to do, all recorded in there. And so that's great. So now I can go up to the File Automate section and go to batch and there's a couple sections to our, our batch dialog here there's the play section which tells Photoshop what action you want to record you can have different sets of actions uh, of course there's different all sorts of different actions here that come with Photoshop and then there's our primat action so obviously that's what we want to do you then set a folder that you're going to run the action on so in my test images folder, I might have a couple dozen images, I might have hundreds of images, but whatever, these are the images I want to run this action on. And we have a couple options here for things we can do. Usually I turn on suppress file open dialogs and suppress color profile warnings. These really aren't uh, very important things. And you want to make sure that Photoshop doesn't stop the action to pop up a dialogue saying, hey, do you want me to do this? Of course you want Photoshop to do it. So suppressing this stuff will uh, make everything go a little bit faster and your action won't be interrupted every time that a dialogue wants to pop up. 
Now in our case with our action, we had a save command in there. And that's really the way we want to do it because potentially we're going to be running this on hundreds of images. And if we don't have the, that save and those close commands in there, you end up with potentially lots of images all open in Photoshop, slowing the machine down and potentially crashing it. And so you want to have the close commands in there. And of course, if you close everything and then save it, well, that's not really going to do you much good because you've already closed everything. So you want to save it and then close it. And because of that, it has to be part of the action. You can't do it as part of the batch dialog. However, with other types of actions, you can set a destination, and once the action's been run on the image, it'll save it out to a folder that you specify. And so I definitely recommend playing around with this a little bit, doing some test runs on six or seven images just to see how everything goes and kind of get a better understanding of how batch and the actions interact. And it's always good to test your actions on a few images before you let it rip on you know, a couple hundred because there's always, you know, many times it takes a couple tries before you get everything working exactly right. So running it on a few images will show you those problems and you won't have to deal with a hundred images that need to be redone. So it's always good to do a little bit of testing before you really get into things. So that's pretty much it as far as our uh, tutorial on actions and batch. It's really pretty simple and I recommend that you give it a whirl and try it out yourself and do a few test actions and a few test batches and really get a good understanding of how all this works because they are, really are critical things to Photoshop and not just Primat, although they work great of course with Primat, but they can really enhance how powerful Photoshop is for you. And they're a very good workflow tool and uh, very, very worthwhile checking out and learning how to deal with. So thanks for listening and uh, join us for our other tutorials.